So how to grow your glutes in the fastest way possible and in the most effective and scientific way possible. This is what we are going to be covering today. So make sure you sit down, you grab your tea, grab your snacks and take, get ready to take notes. And let me tell you something, I went from being anorexic and suffering from an eating disorder to now being stronger and healthier and with glutes visibly bigger too. Um, also, I train thousands of women around the world and I help them transform all the time. Literally, that is my job. So today I'm literally gonna be sharing with you all the secrets for this. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want me to help you, link down below for one-to-one -one online coaching. The most important thing that a lot of people don't get is diet. And when I say diet, I don't mean eating your salads or eating your chicken and broccoli. That is not what I mean by diet. I can guarantee you, if you came to me and I, you actually told me what you ate throughout the day, I know for a fact that if you clicked on this video, you're probably not eating enough. If you actually pour all your food that you consume in a day into my fitness pal, it will tell you that you're not consuming enough protein and you're not even hitting your calorie goals to grow. Yes, I know that is a shock. I actually, when I first started my journey, I thought, oh my God, I'm eating so much. I don't know what, how, how much more I can eat. Wrong, I was actually under eating for my gains and that's why I couldn't see visible results. And a lot of people actually don't see results even if they train hard because they're not eating enough. Stop being scared of carbs. Carbs are actually used as fuel by your body. Scientifically speaking, what happens is carbs get break, get broken down into ATP, which is then gets transferred into the energy that you need for your workout. So if you're not eating a lot of carbs, you will not have energy for your workouts, which is how you lift heavy weights and how you progress, okay? Now, there is two different types of carbs. I actually always recommend eating slow digestive type, slow digesting type of carbs. What does this mean? These are things that stay longer in your system, so the energy gets stored longer in your system so that you can then use it for your workouts. Things like sweet potatoes, oats, Anything like this is a slow releasing type of carb. So actually having this as your pre-workout can be really, really good. Anyway, any type of carb is, is good. It doesn't matter, but these are just a little bit better. Now, after your workout, you want to aim at consuming a high protein meal, okay? You want to consume protein, why? Because protein is the building blocks of your muscle. Protein is what helps your muscles repair after they get damaged during a workout. What happens during a workout, you, your muscle fibers will create tiny little tears inside, okay? And what happens, this is obviously sounds awful, but it, they need to be damaged and then repaired in order to grow bigger and stronger. And what helps with this process of repairing and growing bigger and stronger is protein. Here's the one of the million dollar questions. Do you need to take um, to drink a protein shake after a workout? That is not necessary. What I mean is if you working out for example it depends what time you go and then you're about to have dinner there is no point in you having a protein shake just before dinner because you're going to eat well hopefully a high protein meal anyway so what's the point of you having a protein shake and then the dinner if instead you're not going to eat for a long period of time for example two or two or three hours or anything then yes have a protein shake because you want to have some protein in your system you want to um, obviously track the shake as well because if you're also trying to lose weight bear in mind that when you drink a protein shake it also has calories okay so if you drink a protein shake and then have all the other meals you need to track the protein shake because you'll add about 100 to 150 calories plus so just to give you a little example for my personal self what I like to consume um, before a workout is something like a, a flapjack and this is like oat um, flapjack instead of having porridge. I could also have that if I'm going for the, in the morning. I'd have my porridge, my porridge bowl, and then go to the gym. Great, again, slow releasing type of carbs, which will stay longer in my system. Um, this is for my protein. Um, it's a chocolate one, tasty, delicious. 
high in carbs which is what I need to fuel my workout you could have that or oats or sweet potatoes or essentially you don't have to have a slow releasing type of carb meal you can also have something like a banana um, anything that contains high in carbs and I'll put a list here to just give you some sort of ideas I personally prefer these because they're just quick and easy on the go um, I put the link down uh, below for you to get these um, they're from my protein and also have a discount code Chiara if you want to use it too and um, now since we are in the diet topic there's something called creatine do you need creatine and the answer is it depends creatine is not a magic substance that you take and you'll make you grow your bunda okay creatine is a supplement creatine already exists in our bodies our body produces it already and we normally can uh, consume it by meals um, for, by beef for example chicken and we consume it we take it from normal food however the quantities that we take from normal food are much smaller okay that we take that we will take from taking it as a scoop of protein um, as a scoop of supplement if we take one little scoop of creatine we will get far more creatine than we will get from a normal meal okay so that is why we normally consume so if you're worried about creatine and what it is oh my god it's something like obscure or i don't know what you're thinking it's nothing obscure. it's one of the most studied supplements um nowadays and is also already present in our body and it's in our diet mostly okay so you don't have to be worried about it so what what is creatine Remember I mentioned before that carbs are important as they're one of the main sources of energy. Well, in our body, there are different sources of energy, things that give us energy. One of these things is the create is creatine. Creatine, though, is different from carbs. While carbs give you energy for a longer period of time, they fuel your workout throughout, creatine help you with instant burst of energy. What does it mean? This is used when, for example, you're doing a, um, a sprint, for example, you're doing things like sprint, like things that require an instant form of energy instantaneously. Or when you're lifting um, heavy, heavy weight, you're going for a PB, okay, and it helps you get that energy for that one extra rep, two extra reps. So it helps you lift heavier, okay? It's a supplement. It gives you extra energy on that point. Also studies show that it helps with recovery too and with muscle growth at the end, okay? But this is a supplement, okay? This will help you lift better and recover a little bit faster as well. That was creating does. Are we clear? Not, not even joking. And my name, Chiara, in Italian means clear. I cannot be more clear than Chiara, basically. Now, on to the workout section. Right, a lot of you make one of the biggest mistakes, which is to change workouts all the time for God's sake. I have some of my clients that come to me and they start moaning because why is my workout the same? Why is there no variety? There is the variety that you need for you to progressive overload. I cannot change. Do you want me to help you grow your workout or do you want me to lift your boredom? Or to help you from your boredom. I'm sorry if you get bored, but I'm here as a coach, as an online coach to help you grow. When the gains come, trust me, you will not care about switching your workout every single time. Also, trying to fit. I understand that someone that is a beginner and necessarily doesn't know what to do, they'll watch different YouTube videos, they'll watch different workouts, and they'll try to copy, oh, that person said I should implement this work, this exercise, that person says this, that person says that. And you try to fit so many exercises into your session that is counterproductive. I want you to choose five to six maximum exercises to perform that day. Not anymore. If you do more, you will end up overtraining and that is not good for growth. If I could give you a formula, okay, if you really want to grow your glutes fast, then try to aim at training at least three times a week, okay, or even two is fine, okay, three times a week, Two, two times if you're a beginner, three times if you're more advanced, okay? This is the formula. And um, include five to six exercises, maximum, max, maximum four sets each 
that's it okay and in terms of um, the exercises I really need you to include things like compound exercises which are things like squats split squats split squats squats um, all the lunges variation RDLs deadlifts these are all great okay but people really forget and neglect isolation exercises and when I talk about isolation exercises these are things like they work your side gluteus, gluteus medius and minimus, okay? These are things like gluteus medius kickback, your monster, banded monster walk, your clams, things like accessory exercises that are also important to develop your outer part of your glutes um, that a lot of people actually disregard because they think they're easier, because they think, ah, oh, it's a bullshit exercise. No, just, this is, just because it's an accessory isolation exercise, it doesn't mean that it's not, it's not effective. You want to perform this as part of your glute program. And again, having a plan that you stick to for a long period of time when you work towards progressive overload is key. Now, if you can't do that, that is my job. I literally personalize plans for you and only you. So link down How below to if you want me to create a perfect plan for you that you can stick to and truly grow. Now, in terms of the exercises, I like to perform my personal favorite exercises that help me and work for me are cask bridges or hip thrust. Um, bear in mind that there is not one exercise that there is not one size fits all. You can also try different variation of an exercise. Just because I say that I like cask glue bridges, it doesn't mean that you as an individual might prefer actually things like in the same category, which are which is glued bridges for example they're in the same category so you can pick as long as it's in the same category you can do different variations i personally recommend you choosing um, i'll put some examples here of some of the category of things that you can choose for your own program so make sure you take notes but personally for me what works for me at the moment is things like cast glute bridges and um, i love glute bridges as well by the way i'll implement one um, one uh, of each during my my sessions um, I love Romanian deadlift I love squats personally but you can also do sumo squats um, and I love at the moment I'm doing um, deficit reverse lunges but things like Bulgarian split squats are also great and also let's not neglect the side booty and the top area aka gluteus medius minimus and i love supinated actually cable um side kick and gluteus medius kickbacks as well as banded monster walks and um, hip raises these are my f personal favorite um, again you should pick and choose whatever works for you just because i feel an exercise in my glute it doesn't mean that you will feel it too because we have different genetics different body composition so you need to choose what works for you the key thing to take from all this and from working out in general is that you need to stick to a program that is the same stick to the same exercises and work towards progressive overload what the hell is progressive overload now you need to the reason why you need to stick to the same exercises is that so you can improve and get stronger at that at them get better at them how do you do that maybe one day you start squatting and you can do only 10 kilos and in two weeks time you can actually do 15 kilos and in four weeks time you can do 20 kilos and so on you trying to get better and stronger at an exercise is progressive overload now one little tip that helps me and um, progress quicker in terms of my weight is to add 2.5 kg plates on each side because they seem like they're tiny little plates but they make a huge difference and it's still a heavier weight so i recommend you using those over time now, progressive overload is also about improving the number of reps that you can do. Let's say that you one day I, I could only do, for example, at the moment I'll give you my practical example. I can do only one rep of, I can only do four reps of a 200 kg hit thrust. And let's say that in four weeks I can do eight reps 
of the same weight. That is already, again, progressive overload. Progressive overload is also improving with your form. Let's say you're doing a barbell squat and at the moment with a certain weight, you keep the same weight and you can only go half the way. Now, let's say that in two or three weeks, you can do full range of motion. You can go all the way down with the same weight, but your range of motion has improved. That is still progressive overload. So bear those things in mind when you're progressing up. And if you're switching exercises every single time, you cannot get better at one exercise because your body needs to practice a lot a long time before improving at something, doesn't it? That's how the body works, simple science. Last but certainly not least is one of the most important tip that I'm gonna give you and that is rest and recovery. What does it mean? First of all, never train your muscles when you're still very sore because you'll be counterproductive and you'll have the opposite effect of growth. Rule number two that is comes to sleeping. You are, it, your muscles actually tend to repair and grow. Like I tell, told you that when you work out and you have those micro tears, they actually repair when you're sleeping. Um, so if you're not sleeping enough, you're not repairing. And if you're not repairing, you're not growing. It's simple as. So it's important that you try and get into a nice sleeping routine. You sleep at least seven to eight hours is what we want in an ideal world, okay? And what we want you to aim for. One day I was really stressed with work and with my own personal life and I only slept I think it was three hours or something. I went to the gym to do my same workout and my strength was affected. My workout was absolutely crap. I didn't have the same energy and the same strength that I normally have when I'm lifting. And that also happens to me when I sleep five to six hours. I can notice the difference instantly. Now, I hope this helped you. These are tips that obviously I learned with my experience as an online coach. I'm a qualified, certified personal trainer. I train thousands of women around the world. And these are some of the general things that obviously can apply um, when it comes to growing your glutes. I hope you found this useful. Um, if you want me to create a plan for you as well, again, link down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found it useful and see you next time with the next video.